thanks everyone for joining and here goes the deal like we had like a series of talk we are talking on memory management and basically we are talking on automated memory management so we definitely know that we came out from the era where we were uh, doing a uh, manual memory management and still uh, languages do it and uh, there are a lot of uh, followers of that language and those languages still do a lot of serious jobs we cannot say that uh, manual memory management is good or automated memory management is good what uh, we have learned in computer science and it industry that everything will have a trade off right so if someone will tell you that this is good and this is not good i mean uh, and you are believing on that person then you are just uh, a plain fool right so uh, at least in the computer science and even even in the i mean normal life we know that there is a trade off of things okay nothing can be just good okay if it has good it has to uh, subsidize somewhere if it is subsidized somewhere it is good somewhere right so we know the complete trade offs and the only good thing that you can have is the knowledge of your application knowledge of the underlying architecture to understand that what is uh, the trade off you are dealing with okay and with this only i will start today's presentation where um, again we are going to talk about uh, automated memory management we are talking about garbage collector and i will say like this is good this is the best this is awesome right but uh, you should be clever enough to understand that okay what is the side effect of this what is the what is the part which is, which got subsidized here right so uh, understanding that actually will help you uh, now now you have two things you have say like a java application uh, which is running and you have a java so now you know that what kind of application i am working with right i can be working with a e commerce application i can be working with a banking application i can be working with um, uh, say a uh, lot of uh, application which deals with lot of concurrency and parallelism like uh, like a uh, lot of uh, data is coming and i am doing some distributed system work right so you you know after 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 all these talks you are better knowing java you are better knowing your application and uh, you you should be like now the complete architect of your application so you should say okay see uh, this thing will work uh, i think best for this application again i am telling you you cannot say this thing will work best this thing will work best for my application so this is this is these two things are very different okay so uh, a matured mind can talk about like uh, always in the best and super and all those kind of things but if you have a matured mind you always need to understand that it is it is the demand that you need to supply okay there is nothing can be perfect fit everywhere okay so uh, we we had a series of talk uh, before going uh, 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 in this automated memory management i am covering chapter 3 though this is chapter 5 because we have uh two chapters covered by satish which uh, basically discussed uh, about the application running and seeing how the uh, memory get impacted and the different uh, things by 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 the actual example he have shown it with with some of the live uh, demo okay all the all the series are available onto the youtube till the last so uh, this uh, is going to end the automated memory management chapter uh, satish are you planning to cover anything uh, further We just have one more, uh, just to consolidate what we learned from the. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so uh, yeah, that that is kind of like after the big boss season gets over, people go home and then they will have a season, right? People will ask that, how was your experience? Okay, so uh, I, I am Vaibhav Chaudhary. I work in uh, JVM team uh, into uh, Oracle, and uh, I am working from. Uh, kind of 1.5 decades uh, into this team when uh, we started with sun microsystem uh, blocks i don't write too much but still these blocks are useful to get i mean the informations are like not changing right the knowledge are not changing so it will hold it will still hold good uh, this is again i am just saying a safe harbor statement where oracle say that if you are listening to this presentation by a oracle guy it is just for the knowledge base it is not for the marketing decision base so just listen to this guy for the fun uh, activity not for uh, uh, taking the business decision and and very true with uh, almost with all my slides because uh, uh, since uh, i generally make slides with whatever knowledge i have i just gather few knowledge here and there but there is a good chances that some slides can be misleading to you okay so i am still saying that you need to be uh, wake up you need to be alive at each and every slide and it is very much possible that you can say oh boss this slide has some mistake here okay so it's it's perfectly fine i'll just go and uh, edit it okay because uh, 
I, I am trying to explain you something which is very new to me and uh, we just see the code base and try to understand it. Maybe the understanding what the developer or the guy who has written the code will be different than uh, what I can understand about. Okay, so uh, we, we are going with a quick recap of the garbage collectors just that we have learned now. Garbage collector is automated memory management and we will see that where we are standing right now. Okay, so first of all, we understood that memory management can be automated. Yes, it is very much possible and it is a good deal to do it. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good deal to do it because uh, you can focus on your main application rather than just uh, managing the memory and memory leaks and uh, sometimes even go for the crashes. Okay, but you need to understand that it can hinder the cycle of the application, right? So when, when you are writing automated memory management, that guy itself will take some time, right? And it is possible that it can, it can pause your application, it can uh, reduce the performance of your application and when I say reduce the performance, then you should understand like uh, your application is running through 16 threads and uh, it is possible that uh, memory management will say that I need uh, five threads out of this 16 thread, right? So it, it, it's kind of a uh, reducing the throughput of the application, right? Um, what we uh, need actually, what uh, you know, we are, we are greedy and we need everything good, right? And I already explained to you that everything cannot be good. So what we need is a good throughput, good predictability, and uh, very low, low post time, okay? So uh, we want application to perform very nice. We want to perform the application very predictable, which is uh, one of the highest demanding factor into the market. Like even like there can be a pause, but they, they want like it to be perfect. Like this uh, application should just pause for like five milliseconds or six milliseconds. It should never cross it. Right, so that kind of demand is very much also uh, into the market. And the third demand, which is always there with uh, low latency softwares like uh, big, big e-commerce and uh, uh, transaction uh, applications is uh, the pause time need to be really low, okay? So um, I have seen many clients where they will be continuous learning the graph and they will be seeing, uh, I mean, a lot of people will be following the graph and they will say, oh, see, 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 the pause time has spiked up, okay? Uh, it will always happen that pause time can spike up, but you need to define like 99 percentile, 99.9 percentile. You cannot just say 100 percentile. Okay. So some 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 application and some industry are fine with 95 percentile. Some goes for 99 percentile. Some can go for 99.9 percentile. .9%. Okay. But uh, uh, when you are saying that you are going to reduce your pause time, okay, means the application will not freeze out. Application will not stop at all. There is definitely going to be an impact on your throughput, right? That means you are trying to run the garbage collector thread and application thread in parallel, right? That is called concurrency, right? So there are some threads which I am giving to garbage collector. There are some threads which are I am giving to application. And I am reducing little bit of application throughput for the garbage collector to do the work. And you will feel still that the application is running because the application has not stopped. Some of the threads of the application is still working on it, right? So uh, demanding for a good throughput and demanding for a very low pause time is just like a too much of eager demand. You need to be very, very careful that what you are looking for, okay? So um, if you are running like uh, you, you are running a uh, kind of uh, distributed system, say like uh, um, I have seen an application where they were scanning the complete uh, image uh, of the newspaper and they were converting into the online PDF formats, right? Perfectly fine. I think I should just go and look for the good throughput. Nothing will happen if the application will pause for one second or two second in the middle or five second or 10 second even because there is no one getting hindered with that application, right? There is no user interface who is sitting and saying that, oh, why, why, this, uh, why this thing got uh, frozen up here, right? So definitely I should, I should look for a garbage collector who should give me a good throughput, right? Who should not continuously keep application stopping because of some reason and it should just keep doing their work, okay? So what happened with, with the growth in the market, we started looking pause time as much more important factor, okay? So pause time suddenly became an important factor because these days we deal with most of the applications where there is a user interface and user is doing something and uh, user is like uh, 
they are they they are very much like uh, uh, time concerned right so if 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 there is a pause uh, they will just open three four more tabs in parallel and they will move it out right so if you are like i i said the example last time also you are on the flip card and something something is not loading out till that time you will open amazon mintra this that i mean i know that all these things belongs to some few companies only but you will open four five tabs right if you are if you are work, doing some work on swiggy and it will not open you will open whatever zomato this that six, six seven tabs right and what the industry say that if at that time there is a tab got opened that most probably the the, the we will lose the user we will lose the user okay because uh, it is possible that it will go somewhere else and then something can happen i mean they 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 just don't think like how we think and uh, that is what their statistics says okay so i i think i think this part is this part is very much clear right so uh, currently in the java uh, we are on the verge of java 18 release so currently in the java we still believe that g1 garbage collector is the default garbage collector which kind of satisfy all these things. so it satisfies a kind of okay okay pause time it kind of satisfies a okay okay um, throughput okay the, the the application efficiency and there are many different garbage collectors other than g1 which you can you can use it to uh, get a better pass time and we are going to discuss one of those which is uh, ggc okay as the name says that actually it is it is zgc and the name says that okay we are like kind of done with the garbage collector we are making z part of it okay so uh, ggc we will see that uh, how ggc has worked phenomenally well to reduce the pause time and it is dealing with uh, I mean, with a guarantee pause time, nothing more than 10 milliseconds. And now we are almost guaranteeing that the pause time will not be more than one millisecond. Doesn't matter how big your application is, how big terabyte your heap size is. Okay. So the most important part is that heap size is immaterial. Okay. It will always give, going to give you a pause time lesser than 10 millisecond. And with the newer uh, benchmarking with the pause time less than one millisecond. Okay. That means if I'm going to use GGC, I mean, I should just forget about pause times. I mean, I should just think like there is no pause by garbage collection. Okay. So automated memory management are doing enough work to uh, claim that they are nowhere existing, right? So they, they, are, they are not taking any, any place and they are just doing everything perfectly fine. Okay. With, with having such a low pause time into GGC, uh, what happens that we came out from the weak generational hypothesis. Okay. So I have discussed weak generational hypothesis into uh, chapter one, where we discussed like uh, the first idea was that a uh, lot of, lot of object die young and lot of object on, there are only few objects which can claim for the longer time. So object which die young, we should uh, reclaim those objects much faster. And that's why we created a partition into the heap, right? We said young generation and old generation. Why? Because young generation, we will run the garbage collector more frequently and we will try to get as much as uh, uh, newer dereferenced object as much as possible, right? So that was the idea. Young generation used to be smaller than older generation used to be bigger. Young generation still had a lot of uh, stop the world event because uh, it, it's a small heap, right? So even stop the world is not going to uh, impact you much. Okay. So, uh, and we also discussed that how the different memory references can, uh, where we can control the garbage collector. So we discussed about the weak references, phantom references, soft references. And we thought that uh, there can be a time where we need objects which uh, like, which should not fall down into the perfect GC analysis, right? So I should, I should define like when uh, garbage collector should take it or when garbage collector should not take it, okay? And we have seen a lot of scenario in chapter one again, where uh, we discussed like what will happen if you are going to explicitly create a weak reference or you are explicitly going to create a phantom reference. Okay, how the garbage collector work? What are the instructions that we pass to the garbage collector when these kind of references, other than the normal references like int i equal to new integer, if falls down, okay? How the GC need to behave in this kind of uh, uh, references, right? So this is what we have seen into the past. So here I will take a pause and uh, I, if there is any questions, uh, please go ahead and you can have it. And then we will start with our uh, more on the technical details with the algorithms and uh, uh, 
uh, what is what is my plan that I will first tell you all the algorithms and then I will just tell you the story of a uh, thing and you should know that where which algorithm will fit in, right? I mean, that will just feel you like you are like the owner of the GC. Okay, so that is my plan. This this is your time to ask any questions. Uh, if there is some question available in chat, then um, uh, Satish, you need to help me out. Question about the uh, same question that we often have. So what is the impact that Graal VM have on this? Okay. Um, let me let me tell you that uh, uh, you have you have asked a good question. Okay, so uh, when when you say Graal VM, okay, what is what is first of all you need to understand what is the Graal VM? Graal VM is a, a compiler interface first of all, which uh, actually uh, used to write static compilers and runtime compilers. Uh, we have a we have a series of discussion on a static compilers and runtime compilers. If you know if you are from C C plus plus background, you know about static compiler. GCC is a static compiler which means uh, it do a lot of optimizations before the compiler uh, triggers at the runtime, right? Is it possible to do optimization? Yes, it is possible. Your dead code can be found at a compile time only. Your lot of chains can be found at the compile time only. Your class hierarchy can be found at uh, compile time only, right? So there are thousands of things which can be done at compile time only, right? And then uh, you have few uh, compilers like JIT compiler in Java, which is a runtime compiler means when it see the profile data, when it see the actual running data, it decide that what should be the optimization that can be done, right? So, so the Graal VM uh, is an interface where you can create a static compiler also out of that and a runtime compiler out of that. We have done it in Java. We had like a ahead of time compiler AOT, which was a static compiler. And uh, we had normal Graal VM, which was a runtime compiler, very much incomparable of C1, C2, okay? Which is no more into the Java newer code because of a uh, lot of regions that we will discuss later. But uh, but right now there is a separate Graal VM which is available. So first of all, don't get confused that garbage collector and uh, runtime compilers are same thing. Okay, are they connected? Yes, they are connected. Yes, they are connected because there are many times when uh, GC and uh, uh, compilers need to discuss. Okay like a uh, compiler can tell the GC that, oh, boss, see, I have optimized some part of the code here. Uh, maybe you should not run the garbage collector here. Okay. Whereas garbage collectors we have seen in chapter two, many times need to put barriers, which actually uh, is going to insert by the JIT compiler. So garbage collector put a lot of read and write barrier, which is an extra piece of code. And this extra piece of code is actually added by the runtime compiler. Okay, this, this we have discussed in chapter two, uh, correct me Satis, if I'm wrong. Okay, even today we will see that how the barriers get uh, implemented, but uh, not in detail because we have already discussed this into detail. Okay, so uh, you can you can turn any garbage collector with Graal VM, you can turn any garbage collector depending, not on the garbage collector, again, depending on your application. So you, you are running an application, you are running your application on the Graal VM, you thought that Graal VM is perfectly fine for your application, you need to say the somehow you need to see that which garbage collector should run in the Graal VM, okay. So uh, Graal VM runs on JVM and JVM supports you all the garbage collector, okay, so no problem. Anything which yeah, there is an another question, Is mm -hmm. it possible to instrument the past time? How can this be detected in the existing Java code base? Uh, yes, it 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 is it is possible to instrument the past time means uh, to finding out and tuning. Okay, so uh, let, let let me tell you here the where the industry is standing right now. Okay, there there are a lot of uh, incident analysis tools which can uh, instrument the past time. Definitely, they can instrument the past time. And uh, these uh, these tools can uh, tell you like, okay, this is the pause time. This is the number of time the GC has uh, stopped. This is the max pause time. I mean, it's not only about the pause time, right? There is an accumulation of pause time. Like if I have to draw, one second, I'll just draw a graph. I will just uh, get a annotation and uh, let me see if I can draw a graph. Okay, so so. Let me let me explain you this. You 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 can see I'm drawing something yeah, on this. It's it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you should just think like this is my uh, this is my limitation of pause time, right? And how is your application moves is actually it moves like, right? Right, and you, you, you. Till now, you understood that whenever there is a spike down, that is uh, a memory spike down, and that can only happen when the garbage collector, the garbage collector will get triggered. 
right? Now you need to justify this that uh, is this pause time fine for me or not? Okay. Now maximum pause time can be a concern for few people because uh, uh, yes, application looks freezed out. Okay. And when I'm saying pause time, we are saying stop the world event. Okay. Even though the Java can tell you the complete uh, details like uh, what is the latency, what is the uh, throughput, everything can be can be seen actually. I will show you from the JMC. That's the reason that before the talk, I have started my JMC, right? But it, it is you, it is not me or anyone or not a formula who can decide that this pause time is acceptable or not, okay? Maybe uh, you can go and claim that boss, this one is not, two is not good enough. Maybe one pause time, so say like 99 percentile, right? I discussed this, may not be good. I need to go for 99.5 percentile, right? Like means out of 100 iterations, out of 100 iterations, one pause time is not good enough because that is 99 percentile. Out of 200 iterations, only one guy can break the max limit value. Okay. All depends upon you. People are crazy. Uh, companies are crazy. I don't think so anything happens. But yeah, maybe uh, there is an impact on the, uh, on the application side, on the client side. Okay. So uh, this, is, this is something which you have to decide. Uh, sorry, uh, Satish, I forgot the question in the middle only. Uh, this is what the question was. Yes. So how to instrument the past time and how this can be detected in existing Java code base? Yes, 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 yes. That uh, that we will that we will uh, uh, talk uh, into full when I will uh, get the applications on. So you can uh, you can see my. Um, there is a tool called JMC, right? Ah, uh, there there are thousands of tools. So you can see there is a tool. I am going to run it. Don't worry about it. Uh, I need to start some application to load the applications. But you can see we will go to the memory. Uh, okay, uh, this is not running. Let me try to load the JMC itself. There is a memory, there is a graph, there is a total heap graph. We will, we will discuss everything into the complete detail. Don't worry about it. Okay, in the memory, they will give you each and every explanation of what is the metadata, what is the old generation size, what is the new generation size, total time of the collection, how many times the GC have run, when is the GC started, when is the GC ended, every each and every detail. Okay, and more than this detail, if you want, you can use the command line tools and you can get into your file and you can um, do whatever you want to do with the data. Okay, and this is not, this is just one tool, GMC is just one tool. There are thousand tools like uh, memory analysis tools and a um, uh, lot, lot of, lot of uh, other tools. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we will, we will come back on this tool. Okay, don't worry about it. Uh, is there any way I can clean everything? Clear, clear all fine. Okay, now, now, um, now I'm moving forward. Okay, uh, Satish, I'm moving forward. Okay, I know there will be some more concerns around this year, but I will tell you one thing that anytime a concern comes in your mind, okay, and I believe that you all have a right mind, okay, just think that what are the different trade offs I need to take the decision, okay. Uh, is there something good? No, I mean, I, I, I know I am repeating this third, fourth time, but it is just repeating for sake of your uh, uh, confidence. You should just ask that if this is good, what is the side effect of this? If, if this is the side effect, what is good about it? And then you should be able to find out your uh, answers. Okay, so uh, this is how about the automated memory analysis. Okay, so uh, different flavors of garbage collector, which uh, Really, I have taken it from the ancient time. Like uh, I have started with uh, serial GC, parallel GC, concurrent mark and sweep CMS used to be one of the most famous garbage collector, which is no more into the Java code and the G1, right? So um, if you see a serial and parallel GC, uh, they were a stop the world event. I mean, uh, concurrent mark and sweep we have discussed in the detail where uh, the, the, the old garbage collector was uh, mostly concurrent phase, right? So that's the reason that why we said concurrent mark and sweep, okay. In the chapter one, we have discussed that how we have made CMS concurrent, right? What are the tricks, techniques, uh, kind of uh, foxy techniques we have applied to get it uh, uh, into the concurrent phase. Then we have discussed into the G1 that uh, G1 also is most of the old phases of G1 is concurrent and G1 do compaction, but some of the places of the compaction of G1 is again stop the world event, okay. So uh, G1 is good enough to replace CMS actually because they are kind of very similar uh, garbage collector. 
the advantage between G1 and CMS, the advantage of G1 over the CMS is that G1 respects the pause time much better than what CMS do. Okay. And we also discussed that how it happens, right? So uh, currently I can just tell you like in one line that what CMS used to do is that CMS used to uh, clean the whole floor in one go, whereas the G1 used to say that uh, divide this floor into different blocks and I will clean block by block. And anytime the application will say that I need to get started, your pause time is getting over, the G1 will give control back to the application, right? This is how uh, G1 used to work. Okay, so you can think G1 to have uh, less higher spikes in the pause time, but can be uh, more spikes, more smaller spikes if compared to CMS. Okay, and this is the this is the front and back of both the G, uh, both the G1 and CMS in the terms of effect. Okay, so you should you should know it. Okay, G1 do a lot of other techniques to uh, get things faster. Like uh, sometimes the old generation will, uh, old generation work will get piggyback on young generation work. Okay, we will, uh, it, it actually need to run the old uh, old GC, old generation GC, but uh, we will tell uh, young generation guy to do some help to get uh, get it run faster. Okay, so, so lot, lot of techniques, lot of techniques, I mean, um, I, I remember once uh, a presentation like I have written some 16, 17 algorithm that G1 uses. Okay, so let's let's not uh, go and break your head into that. Okay, but uh, just understand that G1 is standing uh, a very nice gold standard where everything is like kind of a balance. Now we uh, came to uh, GGC where uh, we do everything in concurrent. Okay. Like uh, it's almost, you can say it's a, it's a pauseless garbage collector. Okay. When I say it's a pauseless garbage collector means the pause time is very less, which uh, the G1 uh, uh, the G1 page claims it to be less than 10 millisecond in any situation. Okay. And since the pause time is very less, there is no use of following the weak generational hypothesis. And we really don't want young generation and old generation kind of thing, right? So in G1 actually in, uh, sorry, in GGC, what we did, we have a scrapped out young generation concept. We have only one generation. I should not say that we have old generation concept, but we have scrapped out the concept of young and old. Okay, so there is only one generation. Okay, where everything we do concurrently. Okay, and today I am going to tell you some mind blowing tips that we apply to make everything concurrently. Okay, in fact, you will be shocked to know that I have I have already discussed into chapter one that root scanning is a stop the world event right root scanning means the first entry point to enter into the heap right so uh, when when we do a root scanning actually what we do is that we try to find out that uh, the, the the start point of the garbage collector right so any object inside the heap which is which is uh, reachable from the root we say that they are accessible object means they are live object. and if they are not reachable from the root we will say that these guys are dead objects uh, good for the garbage right now, the, at the time of root scanning, root, root scanning is local variable scanning and a lot of actually uh, thread stack scanning, right? At the time of root scanning, actually, we, we stop all the mutator threads. Mutator threads are generally application threads. Uh, so we, we stop all the mutator threads because we should not go wrong at the time of root scanning, right? So now, but you will today learn that in GGC, even the root, uh, even the thread stack scanning, we are doing in concurrent, okay? And uh, it it's it's like uh, when I first uh, read that algorithm, like I was kind of shocked, okay? That uh, this is like this is like too good. So uh, let let's see, let's see all the things. And the the most important thing again, which we discussed about the stop the world event into chapter two is. Uh, uh, relocation right so you know till concurrent mark and sweep there was no complexion kind of uh, uh, thing so when uh, the, the the memory used to reach to like about to go out of memory cms used to say like i cannot do anything let's try to do a complexion and then when, when the complexion happens it, it was a stop the world event why because uh, you, are, you are moving memory right so you are taking memory from 0xff and you are moving it to 0xa right so now moving the memory pointers, moving the memory reference, I have to stop that, okay? Else you are going to screw up the application big time, okay? So if you are doing compaction or if you are doing the relocation of memory, it need to be a stop the world event, but this is all old story. Today we will see that how the relocation had been done in concurrent, 
okay so we will move the memory uh, we will move the memory address from one reference to another reference and at the same time application will keep running okay and uh, we will see the challenges that that will come in doing that and uh, yes we can face those challenges and we can fix it okay so these are the massive areas where we had like the bigger pause time at the time of compaction at the time of root scanning okay root scanning was not a big pause time but still okay so today we are going to see like how we have solved all these problems okay and again i am reiterating second time what i will tell you that before going into the detail of ggc which i will not go into too detail okay i will tell you few algorithms and those algorithms i will just tell you on the operating system or processor level or a memory management level okay it has nothing to do with the java and then when we will learn ggc i will ask you that do you think that that algorithm which we discussed is going to apply somewhere here and you should you should be able to figure it out yeah okay so getting a little deep diver into uh, ggc before that we have seen uh, these algorithms into the past okay I still i am into the recap phase Slow, uh, sorry um, uh, satesh that it is taking some time but still i am into the recap we have seen uh, tricolor marking tricolor marking is the gold standard of how the concurrent uh, the concurrent threads of uh, applications and the garbage collector can work together right and then when we saw that if the application threads try to uh, interpreting the gc threads what is the issue that happens in tricolor marking right so the issue this which we have seen is the floating garbage and the issue which we have seen is the uh, corrupted writes or reads right floating garbage was not a big issue for us because it can be cleaned into the next time but if the write or read get corrupted it was a big issue which we have resolved it by barriers okay barriers we are still going to use it you can see our chapter 2 videos where you can clearly understand what is barrier but if someone have missed the video i will just reiterate again that barrier is a small piece of code that a runtime compiler i will i will again say jit compiler because java is still uh, work, works with the jit compiler a runtime compiler or the jit compiler inserts okay on behalf of garbage collector okay so so let me explain you this like uh, uh, i am i am cleaning the home i am cleaning the home and this analogy we given before and i i told my kids that uh, you are you guys are good to throw your uh, garbage and i am continuously cleaning okay that means the gc is running and the application is running who is the application kids are application who are throwing the garbage and we are like cleaning it okay now what we do in the barrier that whenever they will throw something okay i will put a tag mark for them okay i will put put a tag mark that this guy is coming new you cannot just throw like that okay so jit compiler will insert a small code there and jit compiler will tell that i need to know that what is coming in okay and when this will happen when this will happen that that you are you are inserting extra piece of code before some operation happening what will happen with that extra piece of code the other guy will take some kind of action means if the if the garbage collector is if the application is coming and they are seeing that there is a barrier inserted here right the 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 application thread need to understand that i need to do some piece of work extra now to get this work done okay because gc is running gc is running into concurrent mode and gc is cleaning and i am trying to screw up the gc work so i need to be very careful okay the whole detail of load barrier and store barrier we have discussed into chapter 2 uh, you still can go ahead and read it uh, today again i am going to see the ggc uh, load barrier which is a read barrier how they tackle the read barrier and only with the read barrier how they can do the work okay so um, i i am sorry that my recap will finish here and anything which you think interested excited please go and look at the youtube videos okay i am not here to tell you that please subscribe and press the bell uh, bell button or something like that they say right okay so uh, 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 basically this is the gc algorithmic combination if you are running with cms you are running a tricolor marking tricolor markings runs everywhere you are writing a write barrier with a with a incremental update so you can see incremental update means a post write barrier means after the write i will insert the jit code right in the g1 we are doing tricolor marking but the right barrier is a snapshot of at the beginning that in, that means it's a it's a pre write barrier means before writing we will insert a code 
Sarandova, which is a garbage collector by Red Hat, and GGC, which is a garbage collector uh, by uh, Oracle. So Sarandova actually also use write barrier and use very much like G1. So it 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 inserts a JIT code before the uh, write, whereas GGC just works with the read barrier. Okay, it 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 really don't need a, really don't need a write barrier. Okay, so uh, most most interesting part are yet to come, but you you should understand that whenever someone tell you G uh, one, okay, you should understand oh, G one boss, I know G one is combination of this, this this algorithm. That's it. Okay, then they can ask you what is these algorithms. You should explain is this is what happens in tricolor marking. Now I am went into concurrent phase. Application is trying to screw up. GC is trying to screw up. We solved it with the barrier and uh, which barrier read barrier write barrier. We are applying a write barrier. This is how write barrier works. This is how we solve the problem. That's it done. I mean, okay. He he. They will they will give you a job like in two minutes. Okay. Now I am going into a deeper thought of GGC, right? So uh, let's let's uh, before going into GGC, let's see some of the algorithms. So first of all, we you need to understand compare and swap. Okay. Most of the people uh, who are still deals with some of the computer science knowledge, they know this. But uh, let me tell you, I have just written a C code for compare and swap. Compare and swap is the most algorithm when you deal with multi-threading and when you deal with the synchronization, okay? Because what happens in the synchronization that you have to swap the two blocks and the swapping of two blocks or swapping of two values should happen in the atomicity, right? So um, in, in, in the synchronization state, we see that the value should not be changed, right? Means no other thread should have screwed up this value. If that is the case, right change the value else don't change the value okay so that is the meaning of compare and swap this means that you should compare the value with the old value if the old value retains means no other thread have screwed up the value try to put the new value okay and do this all work into a atomic operation right do you need to do no most of the processors these days they provide you something called CMP exchange, you may have seen if you are, if in general you see the assembly codes, you will, you will encounter CMP exchange multiple times in your code, actually in the assembly code, right? So you can see the compare and swap I have written. Okay, first of all, the atomicity is been added at the top. Okay, I have taken the pointer of the old value. If the, it is pointing to the old value, pass the new value, right? And you can end the atomicity, else you don't do it, okay? So um, the atomicity need to be guaranteed that there should not be any thread coming in between and screwing up the value. If you have screwed up before, it's perfectly fine. Then uh, I will leave it as it is. But if the old value is still retained, try to exchange with the new value by this particular thread. Okay, no doubts. So uh, you can read the second line with me. The atomicity guarantees that the new value is calculated based on up-to-date information. If the value has been updated by other thread in the meantime, the write would fail. Okay, this is called loss in the write. No doubt, fine. This, we are going to use it. Okay, we are going to swap a lot of things. And when I'm saying I will swap a lot of things, that time you should remember CS algorithm. I'm going to apply here. Fine, good. Okay, so uh, this is what happens when I do thing in night. Okay, I, I should just put a I just I should just put a drawing which is there in the next slide. But second algorithm which I'm going to use is multi-mapping. Okay. People who have studied their operating system into college time, uh, they know multi-mapping. I will again reiterate for you. Multi-mapping say that many virtual memories can be point to same physical memory. Okay. So it, it happens that we saw a very uh, rosy picture of virtual memory. We will say, boss, take this, how much memory you want. But actually many virtual memories will be pointing to the same physical memory, right? So not going too much into the detail, but you know the page concept, you know how we swap in the page in and out, okay? And how we can get the virtual memory. Now, uh, you, 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 should, you should think like, uh, you you should think like you you know this concept right i mean you you went you went in a restaurant and you have like they are giving you three different kind of biryanis but they know that you are going to eat one only right so um, I, I know that any one will be only mapped into the actual physical memory right 
like like we all do in our companies right we are like uh, interviewing 10 candidates who are almost kind of similar thing but only one will get selected okay so the, i will just show you that okay 10 candidate is available for me but uh, is that 10 candidate really going to map into 10 different locations in physical memory no it will be only one memory right so so the, 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 this this concept is very similar and it is very appropriate like we saw a big virtual memory and it goes to map into the same physical memory so here here in the garbage collector we are going to see something where uh, gc will do some changes application will do some changes either we will take the change by gc or we will take the change by application okay so so you 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 got my idea right so either gc guy will get into the actual memory uh, physical memory or the application guy will get into the actual physical memory okay the whole idea is clear so multi map we are going to use into ggc multi map is a very very uh, nice concept which is uh, mostly taught in operating systems but it applies uh, everywhere where you are doing a if and else either if will go or the else will go okay both cannot fit into the same uh, the same physical memory okay now uh, after multi map okay let's 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 start with the ggc so uh, you understood uh, cs and you start you understood multi map right now uh, again i am telling you I'm, i will not take you too detail on ggc because there are like thousands of uh, other thing to learn but ggc works very similar to the structure of uh, g1 garbage collector which say that divide the complete heap in different blocks okay and let's work into block by block and uh, if if uh, uh, we we are done with the few blocks okay we can we can understand that uh, we need to return the uh, the things to the application we return we need to return the command to the application or we can do more work okay so uh, ggc unlike g1 gc they work on different size of block structure so um, they will have a small blocks where they can put a small data codes they will have medium size and they will have large large for the humongous object okay you create a big array okay so i will I, i'll go and put that into large block humongous block okay <clears throat> don't don't get confused okay that uh, uh, it, it, it is possible that you have large enough contiguous memory but still it will fit it will be a smaller than medium but we will call it large because it is about the uh, continuity or the contiguous size of the memory blocks okay so sometimes we we really create bigger memory chunks okay so uh, this part is clear okay so ggc works with the blocks just like g1 gc but different kind of block sizes not a fixed kind of block size okay so um let let me not take you through this slide and let me let me come back to this first okay this also now i will explain you before okay so just try to understand that first of all how the relocation phase works in ggc other phases mark and sweep this all works very similar okay how the relocation phase happens in ggc so what i am trying to do is that i am trying to change the memory location of a object i am trying to change the memory location of the object at the same time application is running okay okay this is this is just a this is just a um, i mean kind of a magic which we will see how it happens so uh, let's think that gc root has not changed okay gc root have not changed now what happens that o3 i need to relocate to o3 dash and um, uh, o5 i need to relocate at o5 dash and o6 i need to relocate at o6 dash okay i am i am holding a kind of uh, concurrent hash map kind of a data structure which is not actually concurrent hash map uh, you need to apply your cas and you need to apply your memory map but for the timing you can understand it's a concurrent hash map right now i will put the entry so the entry changes from o3 to o3 dash o5 to o5 dash o6 to o6 dash life looks very similar very easy now what happens that o1 is pointing to o2 you can see in my diagram o1 is pointing to o2 uh, after this presentation i will make the complete animation and i will upload it somewhere uh, but uh, just sorry me that i have not made like so many slides for this so now what happens that o1 is going to become o1 dash okay the time o1 is becoming o1 dash the application came and application told that boss i have to change this reference to i need i need to work here okay but 
can application do it no application cannot do it because gc is running into the concurrent phase and there is a load barrier that has already added so application understood that there is a load barrier okay so you you can see my first line so uh, so load barrier means gc is running right so what application will see they will see a different color pointers don't get confused into color pointer you should just think that if gc have tried to made some place guard it will it will it will change the color pointer okay so you can you can think like it will it will make the color pointer right okay again you, you, this this is all the uh, software part which we will discuss actually but you should think that now application came and application saw a different color pointer means application saw that this guy is not as it is so i cannot just change it why this guy is not as, as it is because gc is running and gc is running into concurrent phase and gc have put a load barrier on this okay so the time it will understand that color pointers have changed it has to take a slope okay what do you mean by slow path now it is the application thread which is going to write an entry into the concurrent hash map okay application will tell okay i understood there is a different color pointer let me do this work and they will enter the o1 value became o1 dash into the concurrent map right good the the color pointer has been changed again and who has changed the color pointer application have changed now at the same time gc can come again and gc will say uh, i think i need to work on o1 but what is this i mean it looks like the application is doing work so gc will again get a different color pointer okay right because application color pointer has been changed and i will tell you how many color pointers are there don't get confused so gc will get a different color pointer and gc will tell okay uh, looks like application have done some changes so gc will try to write the same data okay but when gc will read to the concurrent hash map can it enter into the concurrent hash map no it cannot enter because there is already an entry existing into the concurrent hash map right so what will happen with the gc gc will lose the race right here who has done the relocation for the object reference here the application have done the uh, relocation for the object reference gc have lost it uh, uh, race right so you can see that it is possible that gc can win the race or it is possible that application can win the race but you know this uh, data swapping right how we have done this data swapping anyone which algorithm we have used cas cas perfect perfect big clapping for you so we have used a cas for here right and that is how we have done the data swapping so that means only one guy can win the race both guy cannot win the race okay so that is the reason that why i i wrote the cas up front okay because you should understand that how the the the, the race is going on right so in, in the concurrent hash map or it's not actually a concurrent hash map it's a, it's a much bigger data structure than our thoughts right what will happen that we have applied a cache and we have applied a memory map now i will tell you that where is the multi mapping happening where it, but you understood so what is happening that you know that all the different color pointers there is a different references that is available different references available either with the gc or with the application but only one can win the race right and this is the point where we discussed about the multi mapping right so if you will go forget about the finalized bit there are four different kind of colors that color can be remark 0 or remark 1 and the third color is called remap right so out of this three colors actually this one color will be will be application color one color will be the garbage collector color and one color will be again the remapped color okay means if the application or the gc have actually remapped it means they have actually entered the data into the concurrent hash map now this with this three data set bits which we have set color just for making it fancy so that people can understand you can understand that if there is a color mismatch or if there is a bit mismatch what will happen the other guy have to wait for see who actually wins the race right and based on this three virtual memory right either it is mark 0 or mark 1 or remap actually one thing will get transformed into the real physical memory any doubts satish uh, seems so because already there are people ask questions so 
Uh, I have one question. If if now in the three one was win, what about our remaining two? If suppose yes. two other processor are modifying, then what about the other two? Exactly. It will take as a this one. Let me. This one is a okay. This and uh, can I put a cross symbol here? That is a very good thing which is missing in my slide. So uh, I should uh, just gray it color right now. Okay. Means actually, this guy will be thrown out from the picture. Okay. So uh, the, 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 the next reference will be thrown out from the, uh, from the memory, right? Like here, the O1 dash dash or whatever, the garbage collector is trying to uh, uh, relocate it again, that, that memory block will be thrown out. I will put a cross here and I will, uh, I will update the slide. But uh, right now, um, it will be a little tough for me to color thing. Yeah, some red color will look good. Let's do it. Yeah, now it, it looks uh, perfectly fine. Okay, since uh, application won the thread, garbage collector lost the thread, the, the, the data reference of the garbage collector will be deleted or it will be nullified. Good question. Thanks uh, for changing. Uh, uh, is there possible that another, uh, the same application thread can come back again and want to update it or do something with the object? Okay, uh, that will be like uh, that will be like the second iteration. Okay, that time. So see, uh, whenever, whenever uh, the application thread comes, this, uh, first of all, we need to understand that this scenario is very rare. And, uh, you know, uh, software industry, 90% of the time we discuss just the rare scenarios. So uh, the, 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 the rare part of this is that there is a load barrier. Okay. It will happen very less time when the application thread will come and the GC thread will be running in the concurrence state at that time. Okay. And uh, this, I remember in the chapter two, you can see I have written a code also that what is the, what is the load barrier, how it looks like. So if the application is coming again and if the application is coming again and gc is still running this is the same iteration that is going to happen right so um, just think like this is now a relocated object there is a new object and then the whole story of concurrent data concurrent has map cs and multi mapping everything will apply as yeah okay thank you so is this is this it was interesting i mean i think uh, you are you are good to understand right what is going on here and how the things are going on and it's it's a, it's a uh, Trust me, it's a beautiful piece of code that has been written. And uh, uh, since if you want to go more detail, you can go inside the code and you can just search. You will get everything. If you are seeing a Unix code, you, you know how the Unix do multi-mapping. They will use a map. If you are seeing Windows code, they will do like create map. So all the native codes are written. You can enjoy whatever you want. And uh, you can see how the map is working and how they are. Uh, 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 converting the phys phys uh, the virtual memory into the physical memory, either it is mark zero, mark one, or remap, and all those kind of things. Okay, finalize. I have not discussed because finalized code is little bit uh, more respect, which we which we handle into different situation. Okay, so if this part is done, understood, and dusted, what I will do is that I told you something at the beginning, right? That uh, even the root scanning is happening uh, into the concurrent phase. And now I'm going to show you uh, another magic where I will tell you that how the root scanning can happen into the concurrent phase, okay? And uh, for that, you need to say uh, JEP376 and there is an algorithm called stack watermarking algorithm, okay? Now you need to understand what is stack watermarking algorithm. It is again, another mind blowing thing. And I will tell you the result, uh, how promising the results are. Let me start with the diagram. So this, this is this is how your thread stack looks like, right? You know there is a limitation of a stack. A stack is like uh, it go it 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 uh, it grows upward, okay. Uh, if you are not on the Solaris, in Solaris the stack grows downward. But let's leave out the, about the Solaris. Most of the operating system the stack grows upward, right? So you you are your frame one, which is the top frame, is the active frame, right? That is called active frame. So the Java application will be working on the top frame. Means it will be working on the active frame. Uh, does this mean that other frames are not doing the work? Yeah, other frames are doing the work, but they are not doing any mutation. It is very important for you to understand that active frame have some mutated values and other frame may be doing the processing, but they will not do the mutation with the uh, thread stack values. Okay, thread will have its own thread local variable and they will have their own registers and a lot of data thread handles, okay. Um, I can I can take you the complete thread. Anyway, we are going to have a concurrency uh, series right after this. There I will tell you that thread deals with what kind of values. Okay. Now you need to understand that 
the top guy is actually where the Java thread is active. So what we do, now I have to find out the root values and you know, most important root values are actually the, comes from the thread stack. So what I will do, I will put a watermark on the first leave it on the second uh, frame. And I will just tell that this is blocked. Again, you can think a type of barrier. Now all the lower guy down to the watermarking are actually in the hand of GGC. Okay, GGC will tell boss here, Java thread is not doing any work. They are just simply sitting into the stack. Let me do my work and let me scan all the GC rules. Okay. So what they will do, they will go and they will scan all the GC roots. You only need to take care what will happen if the top stack will get destroyed, right? If the top stack will get destroyed, you have to move your stack marking lower. You're, you're getting my point, right? It is possible that framework one work is over. Okay, at that time, what will happen? You need to move the stack marking downside and you know what kind of algorithm we are going to use it for that, anyone? Yes. Perfect. Again, we are going to use CS, right? So we, we need to make sure that this all things should happen atomic, uh, atomically, right? It is not like uh, the, the, the application threads and uh, the GC threads both started working in one of the stack, right? So we are going to use, we are going to use CAS and we will keep moving the uh, uh, stack watermarking, right? Now this what makes, this makes the complete thread stack processing into parallel work, right? Your application is running. Yes, it is running. Is GC running? Yes, GC is also running. And let me show you the mind blowing uh, uh, result after the JEP 376. See, this is, this is the pause time that changed after the, uh, the uh, JEP 376. So uh, in JDK 15, JDK 16, where we have introduced uh, stack watermarking, the pause time was seven millisecond for spec JBB. You, you all know the spec JBB is like the gold benchmark for all the uh, uh, application benchmarking. Uh, from the seven milliseconds, we reached to 0 0.5 milliseconds. Okay. And you can, you can see the amount of uh, heap we are using. We are using three terabytes. We are using 224 hyper threads and we are using 2,100 Java threads. Okay. And this is the benchmarking of Sarandawa, which has taken this uh, thread watermarking concept from GGC. So that's perfectly fine. So, uh, I mean, uh, with, with this, we are, we are claiming like a pause time will be less than one millisecond, okay? Because uh, thread stack processing used to take some time. And unfortunately, you know, GC root scanning used to be a stop the world event. So there was only a pause time, which was uh, getting wasted here, right? And uh, with, with the stack watermarking algorithm, what we have done, we have removed the uh, pause time from here also. Any, any doubt, any doubt, any questions, any concerns, complaints? Uh, hi, one question. When yeah. we have a watermark put into place, doesn't it block the thread or a multiple thread activity due to watermark or it does slow down? Uh, no, 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 because, uh, you uh, see, uh, th there is always uh, a, some concern with the throughput, which precisely you have asked about the performance, but it is not that. Okay, so uh, when when uh, I, I told you like the processing of the thread, right, and the thread data. So you need to understand uh, thread carries a lot of data. Okay, uh, like you can think like uh, the registers. Okay, thread have their own registers. These days, local thread registers are there. Now, uh, you need to understand that I just need to scan it, okay, which definitely can impact a little, a, a bit of the processing speed, okay, but this, this scanning is very fast, this scanning is very fast, because uh, uh, number of threads are very limited, I mean, you can, you can, you can think like 200 thread is more than above, right, 300 threads, even most of your applications will not be creating even 300, 400, maximum consider like thousand threads, right? Thousand thread is a very small number of amount to do the work, right? So, uh, um, but it has a very good impact on the pause time, right? So um, in, in a nutshell, I will not deny what you have said that it can happen that there is a uh, degradation in the throughput, but 
that I told you before in the starting that uh, throughput versus pause time you need to. So uh, uh, that's where I have I am I am stopping the GGC. So we have we have started with a garbage collector of the serial parallel where. Uh, like, uh, Weibo, I have one query. Please, please, please. Uh, yeah, please. yeah. This GGC, yeah, GGC, GGC, we can include in Java eight also, right? JDK eight. GGC no? is supported only from JDK eleven. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. It's uh, only supported from okay. JDK eleven. Uh, we have a similar GC called Serendova by uh, Red Hat, which supports in JDK eight. But JDK okay. eight only support G uh, one GC. They don't support GGC. Okay, because of lot of architectural okay. constraint. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, we do massive changes actually, and uh, sometimes we feel like it is not worth to backport this much of massive changes because of the structural changes, right? So. That can be the reason. Uh, Maybe you know, the customers came that uh, okay, you need to backport. So if customers come, like we will be excited to do. But but I I can just tell you the amount of massive amount of work that has been introduced. It is barely too tough to backport this kind of uh, changes. But um, on a nutshell, I can tell you that Serendova, which is very similar to GGC, it 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 works on different techniques. You have seen that it works on write barrier technique. Uh, supports on JDK also, but uh, Oracle JDK don't comes with default Serendova GC supported. So you have to uh, build actually with the Serendova flag on, uh, and the same is true for the Open JDK also. You have to build with the Serendova flag on, then only you are going to uh, get it. Okay, so these these are it's a bit of thing you can figure it out. Okay, so um, uh, uh, Vaibhav, one more question, uh, if you're if okay, Amit, please. Yeah, uh, I, I, I am. Uh, it is interesting to know how pause time is brought down. But uh, uh, another question is like, uh, uh, what is the impact on the throughput with this? Like, how much percentage it will reduce? Uh, throughput uh, reductions is not very high. Uh, see, last time I remember that. Uh, let me let me um, get you through all these details. I was showing some benchmarking last time. Can you see some benchmarking results here? I not see it. Some... I had this. Uh, you 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 remember last time we uh, took this uh, benchmarking, right, man? Uh, sorry, I am yeah, joining yeah. first time. <laughs> ah, that's fine. I got it. So see, uh, before you will go to I not uh, discussions. Let me tell you that uh, what I told you in the starting, like you need to be the king of your application. Okay, so you need to understand. Say, uh, I almost told you many times that there is a read barrier, there is a write barrier, there is lot of uh, uh, parallel operations, there is lot of uh, humongous allocations, there are lot of uh, young generation allocations, right? So. When you are king of your application, you know that, um, okay, I know that my uh, application um, do a lot of humongous object uh, installation. Okay, they, they create a lot of big, big objects. My, I know that my application deal with a lot of write data or my application deals with very less read data, right? So this all things should be very clear in your mind. And with that mindset, when you will go and read say like the benchmarking report because his benchmarking reports you can see like first benchmarking report is about the read and write barrier okay so he he told like how ggc performs in the read barrier and how ggc performs with the write barrier okay and you know the, these are easy to benchmark right like uh, bust heap so what he is doing he is trying to do a lot of uh, 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 writes and then he will see the performance so you can you can go through this performance Okay, if the writes are very high, you can see the GGC throughput is not that great. Okay, if the reads are very high, you, you can see GGC throughputs are very good. Okay, so like that actually, um, what I will do is that I will post you here. And um, um, in fact, I if you should have permitted me, I should have written a few codes and I should have shown you, but sorry, uh, right now I don't have. But this, this will, this will um, satisfy your uh, ideas. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll go. Okay. Please share that one into the chat so that we will. 
Yeah, I shared that into the chat. Oh, ha, huh. Zoom window, no one can see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just copy pasted that into the chat. This is an interesting thing. I mean, when whenever I am on the Zoom window, no one can see that screen. Okay. So uh, going forward, okay, I am going to end it here with, with the GGC, a lot of benchmarking results. Uh, we have more a uh, few things like we, uh, we releases the uh, uncommitted heap back to the operating system. That's a huge demanding to the container world. Like uh, don't hold any memory extra, right? So we know that these are like uncommitted heaps. We will return it back to the operating system. So there are, there are a lot of, a lot of work has been done. Uh, Class loading, there were few parts which were stopped the world. Now we have made even the class loading as a concurrent class loading. I, I forgot to mention the JEP number, but uh, class loading itself happened into the concurrent phase. Okay. And uh, we have solved the challenges of porting GGC on Windows and Mac. First, it was available on Linux, but uh, JDK uh, 17 or 16, it is production ready and it works on all the platform. Okay. So someone can ask me a question in like, uh, why not Windows uh, in the in the initial version? It's it's perfectly fine to not have Windows on the initial version because um, you are you are only looking GGC with with a, with a terabytes kind of data, right? And generally on the Windows people don't run that kind of application. If if that is not your case of the application, then uh, normal garbage collectors like G1 and all can serve the purpose, right? So. Uh, but anyway, the thing is that GGC is available on all the platforms now, including Mac, Windows, Arc, and Linux. Okay, so you can use it. There are there are a lot of improvements that have happened from JDK 11 up to JDK 17, and uh, um, I can you you can just search on the Google. You can get a lot of benchmarking data. Okay. For any query, you can drop me mail anytime. Uh, you can uh, read these uh, links where I have uh, uploaded a few of the talks and links. Uh, maybe you will just get the information on the surface, but they are they are good. They are good. So you 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 can understand the things in you. With this, uh, I am done. I am start. I will just share a um, few runs on the. Okay, final thoughts. Uh, sorry, now I am tired in talking. So the final thought is like. It is awesome and you are fool if you'll just take my words. So you need to understand your application. You need to understand the demand of throughput and uh, pause time. And uh, you are the one who is the decision maker. Okay. From my side, yeah, it's awesome. Okay. So I will just take you through the uh, JMC and I will show you that how the uh, details you can see. Let me, uh, what I should do, let me load something with GGC only. So what I'll do is that, Terminate. Ah, okay. GMC was kind of uh, blocking the terminals. One second. Let me close the roll and start. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you. Uh, well, you just talked about class loader. That class loader is uh, what I'm also checking now recently. But I'm just surprised. Uh, for example, if I have a jar file where I'm starting my application. Do you need to keep the jar file because will that uh, application keep reading that uh, class file again and again from the file system or once it boots up, it will not read the jar again? Is it safe to delete the uh, jar file after the uh, application started? Uh, Satish, class file works in many cases with JDK. Recent JDK, I can tell you that we already load the instance Okay, of the class file, if you are not killing the JVM, uh, what will happen that class file will be loaded, right? So if one JVM instance is, uh, if one JVM instance take like, uh, say like 20 milliseconds to load the, the class, uh, the all the classes, required classes, the, the another instance will take like uh, one second or two seconds. Uh, okay. That is class data sharing. But, uh, that is class data is, uh, uh, my doubt is, uh, consider I have a fat jar. I'm just starting a Java application from a jar file. So mm -hmm. it started my application successfully. Maybe it's an HTTP server. Mm -hmm. After that, is it safe to delete that file? Or yes, it, it, is, it is safe to delete the file. I mean, uh, which, which file? The class loading jar file? Yes, the file from where I started my Java application. But again, you will run some instance, right? So again, it will load the class, no? Ah, next time when I run, right? Oh, the reason that I'm asking is it might sound stupid, but I'm just thinking. No, 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 no. The, it will it will load it again. Anytime when you will shut down the JVM, it will it has to load the class again. 
Okay. 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 JVM is a sandbox application. It 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 uh, the only thing that it believes is the sandboxing security. So uh, if you will start the JVM, no initial thoughts. It has to do everything from fresh. Okay. 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 Uh, and uh, sorry, here I lost right. So we discussed about lost right, and I also lost right. I don't know how to work now. Uh, Mm, okay, Satish, uh, you are uh, the co-host, right? I think it will it will work with your hosting also. I will just close the Zoom and I'll come back because I think I cannot uh, use my terminal because of this. Okay, anyway, we can uh, stop uh, recording, Satish. Okay, we will.